I heard that there, there was a meeting and um, there were members who uh, demanded that we move forward uh -huh. and that uh, Honorable Farber, notwithstanding, not submitting a physical resignation, resignation. letter, uh -huh. has constructively resigned. So, so, so you're, you're confirming that no formal resignation letter was submitted to the Senate? No, but I am telling you, I'm telling you that that was the case for Mr. Saldiva. And he constructively resigned. Okay. Why must there be a different standard mm -hmm. for Mr. Farber? Why must there be a attempt to usurp mm -hmm. democracy? It is for the it is for the council. Do the, the council have the authority to, to, to ask him absolutely to, not. To, to, to stay on? Absolutely not. That would need to go to the national party council as to whether or not they would even want to go down that road, which again, what are we doing? Why is it that the UDP always finds itself hostage to one person? It is the same thing that happened in the February 9th convention in which Mr. Saldiva blew out Patrick Farber because that was the fact of the matter the majority of colleagues and their delegates, because mm -hmm. they, they, there seems to be an attempt to divide the constituency leaders with their delegates. The delegates spoke loudly. The second convention, after all that had happened with Mr. Saldiva, if it were not for defections of people like me and others who crossed over to Mr. Farber, to give him the benefit of the doubt, to say, all right, you want this thing so bad, right? You, we are hold up the whole party because you feel you're entitled to be leader. You know what? I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. I will give you this opportunity. Make we go fight the, the People's United Party together and I will try with you. That is what I did. I am of the position. He failed. I was disappointed and I have been calling for new leadership um, since those failures took place last year. And he got another chance last year. And now here we are again.